Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back. Welcome back to the Porsche Club podcast. Steve is here. Steve is back. Good morning, Steve. Morning. How are you? I'm well. Are you busy? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the time. I, 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 keep, I keep losing track of days. I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to get things done, mate, before everything closes up. Everyone knows mm. who lives in Australia when Christmas comes around. I guess the UK is the same, actually. Uh, it, everything closes and then nothing reopens until, what, end of January, usually? Isn't that what happens in Sydney? Yeah, it depends on what, what exactly you're talking about. But, yeah, like e- eating out and all that sort of stuff. Not that we've been doing it much, but, yeah, most restaurants kind of shut down for a bit. Things um things close well things slow down don't they they don't close down yeah. but I guess things slow down but the restaurant thing always gets me I mean basically restaurants will stay open until New Year's Eve won't they but then they'll um then they'll yeah. uh, then they'll close for um, a break for a break I don't know it might be different this year though maybe maybe, maybe because everything's been closed up for so long um, yeah. excuse my croaky voice this morning I don't know what happened this morning when I woke up but it sounds like I've been drinking bottles of beer all night but I haven't so. <laughs> Hit the terps. I remember a, a police officer many years ago said that to me. He said, you've been on the terps all night, mate? I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Steve, welcome back. Everyone uh-huh. missed you last week. Everyone missed you. I, you heard me say it was my fault. It was completely my fault because I completely right. like, I, I I hate to say it, I probably prioritized the, the getting my front under tray replaced over the car but i actually completely forgot about it you know i told you that you know we we're going to do the recording and then i was like mm. oh man i have to go to order house this morning and they'd already ordered the part so and then i couldn't yeah. go the next day so then i had my um front under no, tray replaced um chris did ask me actually he did ask me because you asked me i don't think did you ask me you asked me if i'd seen it or whatever and i said i asked you yeah, yeah chris asked me if i wanted to take it back and i said no <laughs> i don't need to take it back i don't need an old under tray would you have taken it back, Steve? I thought about you when he said that. I thought Steve probably would have taken it. Um, possibly. Maybe. Depends. I'd, I would have asked to look at it to sort of see what was, you know, like where the kind of cracks and all that sort of stuff were. But um, so depending on like exactly how bad it is, was, whatever. But do you like to do that? Is that something? Because I know a lot of people do that, right? You keep every part that's come off your car, every original part. And I noticed when I was doing my um, leather part install, which I'm very good at, um, mm. I look at the numbers at the back of the parts, you know what I mean, to see if they're the same yeah. numbers, like the ones that Linas covered for me in the UK, whether they're the same ones. Um, yep. And I think, well, I keep all these parts. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to sell these parts, but then I don't keep everything. And it's like, well, I either keep everything or nothing at all, right? It's a bit, I don't know, I'm a bit strange like that. And then I realized downstairs I found a box the other day, and it's my oh. gear shifter. It's my original shifter because I changed to the short shifter, as everyone knows. Oh, okay. And then I found the box, and I'm thinking, what is in this box? And it was my shifter, and I thought, ah, so I have the shifter. Because I remember um, Simon, uh, Porsche Nut 9 on Instagram from Adelaide, he, yep. he gave me that thing about the function first, you know, to upgrade your yep. shifter. And yep. I thought, oh, I could do it on that one, right? I could. It's not yeah, a short could. shifter, but I could actually upgrade the parts on that. <laughs> but then I'd have to change it out and put it in. Uh, well, you seem to be getting handier, so you could always have a crack at it. Like, there's plenty of YouTube vids on how to do that one. Mate, I'm not um, handy at all. Well, I'm not either. Um, like, God's honest truth is, like, I managed to kind of mess most things up um, as well. But you know. I, I, I wasn't going to say this about the leather sunroof part because I know the guys from Order House um, listen to this. And, and I didn't talk to you last week about it, but when I was there... Um, mm. before last week's episode, um, I was chatting with Grant, I was chatting with Anthony, um, mm. and obviously they listen to the podcast and they enjoy the podcast and Chris downstairs, but I had them replace that leather sunroof cover. I don't know whether you listened to, yep. to the episode with Tasha, if you yes, have, I'll, yes. I'll get you to I critic did. that as well. Um, but I let, got them to change that cover and I met, yeah, and I mentioned to you because the part yep. that Linas had given to me had, yep. I think it was from a 996. So the sunroof switch was really shiny black plastic. Yep. And for some reason, I thought I'd taken that switch off it and it was just the empty hole so mm-hmm. that when Order House fitted my one, it's not their fault, it's my fault because I completely forgot, right? Yep. Yep. They fitted the cover and, that, and fitted the cover with that black shiny switch. So then when I was driving back from, from Order House, I'm looking at it going, why does that switch look so weird? And then when I came yep. back, I realized because the one on the 997 sunroof surround, lights around, yep. is matte yep. black. 
it's not shiny black polished black. Yep. So then I thought, can I live with it? Can I not live with it? I thought I can't live with it. So then I had to go downstairs and uh, just take the switch gear out, which I could do without pulling out the, that awful light switch that I couldn't remove last time, which is why Auto House changed it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I switched it out. Uh, it took me a bit of time though, for some reason, because I struggled to get the sunroof cover back in position. And every time I'd screw it in, mm-hmm. the top bit, I'd put my hand and it would come down. So I, for some reason, I couldn't get the clips in properly. I'm hopeless at this stuff, mate. I'm really, really bad, like really bad. I'm, I'm, I'm not good at it either, so I kind of understand. You know the clip things in the in the parts in Porsche? They really You really have to get them so lined up and make sure they really do hear that click because if you don't yep. and you start screwing, the whole thing is just, you know, yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's all skewy. Yep. So, and also in my garage, it was a bit crowded and I couldn't get enough room. So I'm, you know, I'm cursing the person next to me that sort of parked close to me and I couldn't sort of manipulate what I was trying to do. So I probably should have waited, but I did it. I did it. And it does look better. And like I said, no, no fault at all. The house It was my fault because I didn't mention it and I left it in the, in the cover. Um, But it's kind of what happens when you get these parts, Steve, you know, these parts that are, that are not always 997 parts, especially when, you know, I was getting uh, Linus in the UK to source the parts and he would just cover them. They're a little yep. bit, you know, sometimes they're a bit odd. But I keep all those parts. I've got all that and I've got my – I still have my mufflers, you know, from when I changed it to Fister. I've still got those down in the garage. Um, yes, to answer your question, I do try to keep most of those kind of bits that kind of come off the car unless it's completely trashed. But generally generally nothing is. Even like the um, – even my front lip spoiler the things that I've kind of gone through – a gazillion of those. I've tended to keep a lot of them. Um, but why would you keep those? They're, just re- they're not the original part. They're just replacement parts. Yeah. Don't know. Don't know. I guess if you've got the space, then, you know, a lot of it winds up at my parents, <laughs> in my parents' yeah. garage. But <laughs> in, interestingly, though, um, if you do kind of keep it, I know it sort of feels a little bit kind of weird to just hoard all this sort of stuff, but I did it with the 964 on the 993 and then occasionally I come across like a 993 piece and you start to realise that some of that stuff actually becomes quite valuable. Like I remember the steering wheel off my 964 and like the gear shifter and everything, like the gear, as in the gear knob, sorry. Right. Like... um. I hung on to that and at the time I sort of thought, oh, this is probably worth like, you know, $200 or whatever. And if you kind of look at things online, um, the value of that, of those kind of little bits and pieces are only going one way. Do you still have um, the parts for the 964? Uh, 964 bits, I kind of come across it occasionally. I'd, like As I said, most of it's in my parents' kind of garage, so... Mate, you could you could set it. up a shop on you could set up a site on Gumtree. You could become a Gumtree top seller and have all these rare Porsche parts and just put them at crazy prices and see if anyone anyone nimbles. Huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I don't think so. Something I don't know no. what it is. People in Australia know what Gumtree is. I guess it's in the UK as well, isn't it? Or it's like what yeah, is it, it is like now, in the US? Not. What's the Craigslist. priority? Craigslist. 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 It's like I don't know. I have. I seem to have the worst luck with Gumtree. I really do. And I don't really sell that much, but I have my wheels on there at the moment, the Tech Art 20 inch mm. wheels. Anyone in Australia who wants a bargain on Tech Art 20 inch wheels, who knows anyone? I'm not doing shipping though. You have to pick them up. I'm surprised they've not gone. Because I, I saw I had ad. somebody. Yeah, right. No, I had somebody. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, I had somebody, mate. I had somebody oh, from Mel. I had somebody from Melbourne, and yeah. I'm not going to swear, but I could. Oh, well, the, fuck. A, the arrogance, the arrogance of this person that called me. <laughs> oh, sorry, I fuck quit. No, he, yeah, the arrogance, Steve. The arrogance. Hello, Ajmal. Um, the arrogance of this, <laughs> the arrogance of this person when they called me, and I called him back. Mm. You know, and I said in the thing, it was pick, it was pickup only, right? Pickup only. Yep. I'm not. I don't want to pack wheels. Packing wheels is really difficult. You know, like. You know, they're very cheap. Last time I had them advertised for two and a half or two eight, I put them at fifteen hundred. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll take twelve fifty. Yeah. I don't have a problem taking twelve fifty. And like he just messed me around and then he said he was gonna get pack and send to do a quote on it and then he was gonna get back to me the next day. I never heard from him again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then you get nicer people who sort of come back to you and say, Sorry, I've changed my mind. Then I had a guy the other day who wanted to buy them and he's a nice guy, you know. Um yep. Yep. for five hundred dollars he wanted to buy them for. Yikes. So I said no That's... or eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars. And then he could go to a grand. But, you know, I just said, look, you know, it's a little bit low. I mean, like I said, I'm willing to take 1250 and I think that's a pretty good buy for those sort of wheels because they're still they're in immaculate condition. Yep. They have the Porsche crest uh, caps, Steve, as you know. Keep the caps. 
<laughs> well, yeah, I could take the caps and sell them separately. That's what I thought. Um, my tip, actually, this but is... But I just want to get rid of them. I do want to get rid of them, but, you know, I'm still not going to get rid of them for nothing. Super random, like when it comes to shipping wheels. Um, I learned this ages ago. Somebody taught me this trick, which is um, go to a tyre shop and talk to them like a local like non-chain one and sort of see if they'll be happy to kind of do like their run like if you can jump onto their kind of run between melbourne and sydney or whatever yeah um, i know but but i've some done of the, that like a couple of times and it's actually quite good i had two people from melbourne who are who are mm-hmm. basically have all the the signs of approval on gumtree as the best communicators and the best whatever right and mm-hmm. the other guy the other dude he like wanted to have an argument with me why i couldn't bo- why i couldn't pack them for him why I couldn't and take them somewhere. Why I couldn't like drop uh-huh. them off somewhere. Um, uh-huh. Because I own a 911. I don't own another car. So how am I going to drop off four wheels? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. I know I'm being a difficult seller, but it was in the ad. You know, it's pickup. It's that it is what it is. If you want them cheap, if you don't, like I don't want to mess around. But this is why I don't try to list things. You know what I mean? No, oh, explaining that you don't have another car. Not that you need to justify your existence, but that's kind of pretty fair. Um, <sighs> it's a bit of a rant, of reason as to why. Yeah. It's a bit of a rant, but Steve, don't you think in on Gumtree you always do have to justify your existence? It feels like it I, when you sell something. I'm not on there much. I, I've never sold anything on there. I've occasionally bought stuff on there, but they've all been like about this big. Some people mail it to me. I try not to kind of. I'm so antisocial. Um, hello to the um, WhatsApp group thing, but um, <laughs> which one? I I avoid. Bush called one. Um, I avoid as much human contact as much as possible. Stop giving them. Stop giving them free promotion. Don't give them free promotion, huh? Why? Because why? Because it's a guerrilla group. <laughs> it's a rebel group. E B Touch. Actually, yeah, Bernard. I mean, I mean, it's a rebel start group. A breakaway group. Give it a different name. So, Steve, I want host. you to drop the bombshell because you just told me, and I'm surprised. Um, and I haven't had a chance to respond to Bernard when he asked me about getting you to join. I've just been too crazy this week, but I you did joined. Last night. Yeah. Don't ask me why. I just did. <laughs> um, I reached out to Ajmal. I hadn't spoken. I have little chats with Ajmal every now and then, so I just reached out to him and asked me to kind of um, put me on there. So Yeah, it's a good group. They're posting all the time. Like I said, I'm on, on there every now and again, as the guys know. I know they're listening now. Um, but lots Don't of expect um, much from me. That's all no, I can lots say. Of, lots of Porsche information going on there. Um, mm-hmm. But that's good that you're on there because maybe the guys can give us some uh, give us some questions. Not a thousand questions, so <laughs> because we don't have a lot of time. But give us some questions, and we can always bring them up in the episode. I thought that was a good idea. Yeah, so we can do that for sure. Topics. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Good idea. Good idea. Let me just do a, a quick shout out, Steve, because I, last week I, yep. I I did a shout out for a new Patreon member. Uh, there was two new Patreon members, and one of them was Lorenzo. And I was probably half asleep, or I just wasn't concentrating but i do actually know who lorenzo is because i said lorenzo i didn't know about his car um but lorenzo right. is um porsche life new york city on instagram um and lorenzo is actually i've got lorenzo tied up to do a owner stories he's gonna i think i'm gonna record his story on this saturday so he's coming up in a future owner story so that'd be good so hi lorenzo yeah. um thank you for joining porsche cool again and and i look forward to talking to you on the weekend what else steve so let's get on to porsche Cool owner stories this week and uh-huh. um because once again, someone really uh, helped me out. I've been very, very disorganized. Um, and you know I have, Steve. I've been a little bit snowed under. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know why I'm not coping. I'm really not coping. I've been a little bit sort of all over the place. Uh-huh. But David, uh, this week's owner story is number 61. I've got David. Uh, David is from the Hunter Valley. And I know you guys have probably already listened to some of the, listened to this episode already. David's on the WhatsApp group, Steve, that you're on. David's got the black uh, 911 Touring. Uh, full Haven't leather package, it, yeah. yeah if you go, but if you go into the WhatsApp, it's at nine eleven touring, uh, and that's David's uh, David's Instagram at nine eleven touring. Um, sounds like a cool car. Yeah, it is. It is. David's a really nice guy, and David really helped me out because I re- I didn't have anyone for owner stories on Tuesday, and I reached out to David on uh-huh. on the weekend um, because he sort of came to mind first because you know I I, I, be, I chat to I've been chatting to David on and off through DM on Instagram for a while now. Um, from uh-huh. when he owned his, uh, he owned a 911 Carrera T Steve in silver, uh-huh. GT silver, uh-huh. my favorite color, as everyone knows. Um, he had a good spec though. He had it. There was no sunroof. He didn't have the tinted glass. He 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 optioned it from new. He got it from uh, Willoughby, I think. He went to a few yep. dealers, and this is when he was telling the story. It's quite funny when you go in and they actually had stock 
of the car, Steve. They actually had really? stock wow. of the Carrera T. Not in manual, not in manual, yep. but the, yep. you know, not that long ago when you could go in and go, oh, we have a car here. Which one do you want? Um, yeah, right. But he ordered it and it came through. So he had that and then he decided to move up to the, to the Touring, which he got from uh, that good dealer in Melbourne, um, Porsche Den, right? Porsche Den that sells a lot of a lot of Porsches, a lot of great Porsches down there. I've never heard there. of that place before until recently. Is it only a new dealer? That's what I didn't ask David. I have no idea. Well, maybe yeah. they've changed names or something, but um, yeah, I'd only noticed them maybe in the last year or so. You know, it's not like they've been around forever, like Throttle Shop or um, or Richmond's or um, uh, Dutton's and all that sort of stuff. But he, if he did just open up, he opened up at the right time because he really, you know, he seems yeah. to sell these cars pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. But David had a, David and I had a good chat, Steve. We were talking about actually the Carrera T, how Carrera Ts have been selling so quickly in Sydney. Like Autohouse yeah. had a couple of them. Plastic Throttle had one. I think Richmond's had one. They just they're just moving, and the prices um the prices obviously creeped up on them too. Yep. I like the Carrera T. David suggested maybe that's what I should look at getting. I do like the Carrera T. There is something nice about it in the right spec, like what David have. You know, manual, no tint, no sunroof. You know what I mean? I think I don't that's. Know. I mean, you read a lot about, well, you read a lot about it and then sometimes there were some people that were a bit cynical about it and then eventually, like most journos, seem to kind of say that it was, you know, like one of the, the pick of the crop kind of thing. It's just a little bit hard to kind of not be a tad cynical and kind of go, <laughs> well, well, you know, paying paying quite a bit for something that doesn't really have that much. I don't know. Like you'd, you'd obviously just have to drive it and see if it really, the experience really does kind of match up. But the less it has, the more it's worth, right? That's the whole thing. That's the whole Porsche thing. Yeah, sort of, sort of. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like it's just funny because like, you know, again, alongside with sort of stupid value conversations when people talk about rarity, like all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's only this many colored cars in this model and blah 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 it's like yeah i know rarity sort of went into equates to something like a carrera gt or you know like a 356 b speedster blah 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 yeah. like makes sense but when you start talking like you know 997.1 gt3s in white and like how rare it is it's like well i don't well, know if that's sort of like how the rarity thing to me like that's starting to get a little bit out of hand again I guess in 50 years, you look, people will look back and go, that is really rare though. This is the problem, you know, time does crazy uh, things, doesn't it? And you, like you said, yeah, the speedsters yeah. and that, like that, people of that era when they're buying speedsters didn't think the speedster was going to be such a sought after thing, but it is. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's yeah. very similar. Um, yeah. I thought it was interesting talking to David though about his car though, Steve, because he has had that 911 Carrera T and he has right. gone into the GT3 Touring. And I guess it's like all these, all Porsches, isn't it? I mean, each one has its... Each one has its, uh, what do you call it? Character. Character. Yeah, character is a good word. It has a character, right? It's not mm-hmm. necessarily the Carrera T is going to, you know, we know the Carrera T is not going to be as good as the Touring, but on its own as a character, oh, the, yeah, the car is different, right? And it's appreciating it. And I keep saying that story, which I hope I haven't misquoted it about what Cam Ingram said about, you know, the Touring to the 911R because his father has the 911R or two 911Rs or whatever Ingram mm-hmm. collection and how, mm-hmm. you know, he has a touring, he dailies it, he loves the car, but obviously it's not the 911R. The 911R is still better, but, you know, the GT3 touring is a great car. And it's the same sort of thing with the Carrera T, right? It's like different levels, isn't it? It's getting Porsche doing this thing where they get you in on different levels. And I guess Part we always... Too is, yeah. I wonder, like, how, how different it really is. Like, probably, like, if somebody like you or I jumped into a touring versus an R back-to-back, I wonder, like, if in all honesty, like, and we had, you know, 20 minutes with each car, whether or not we'd really kind of pick the difference. Like, surely they're kind of pretty close. Um, if you owned it, like, for, you know, a year and then you kind of got to know it and stuff, then yeah. um, you probably could sort of feel it. But well, I wonder how nuanced the kind of the differences really are. Okay, I think when you listen to the episode, because I know you haven't listened mm. to it because I didn't send it to you, and David's been very, very kind to offer us a drive in his GT3 Touring, which would be the worst thing in the world for both of us, I think. We'd be, go, David. We'd be finished. Yeah. Yeah, go, Super David. Super kind, we'd but be, we'd how, be ruined. how to make somebody really discontent. <laughs> we'd be ruined. We'd be ruined. Um, but, you know, I think David pinpointed the two things. Mm-hmm. 
right? And I yep. think the two things would be, and I think, David, if you're listening, I know you're probably nodding your head, but the gear, the shift, the manual shift, because yep. you've got seven speed in the Carrera T and you've got six speed in the GT3 Touring. Yep. So I think that's a major factor. He said that was, you know, noticeable. And obviously the power, yep. the, the, the pure acceleration of the GT3, you know, the sound and the, and the power of the GT3. I think they're yep. the two things that you, you would notice straight away. But I think the, the gearing is, is a main thing, which we know Porsche do very well, how they, you know, don't give you the right gearing unless you go up, up, up to the right model. You know what I mean? And I think they, they did that with the Carrera T to the Touring. That's the point of difference. You know what I mean? They wouldn't make it the same. Uh, yeah. The difference between the six and the seven um, gears, though, is like didn't um, AP wasn't happy with the seven-speed gearbox, so he kind of stuck with the six for feel and for was it for gearing as well? I think it may have been for feel. Yeah, for feel. I mean, of course, there's that really old video on YouTube. Well, not old; it's a few years old. The Spike and Matt Farrow one. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Where they've got Spike when Spike had his um, touring. Mm. And Matt Farah's got a press Carrera T and they're driving them back to back. And I think Spike was a bit surprised how much better the Carrera T was than he thought it would be. Um, yeah, right. I still think he, he preferred his touring, but I think he was surprised how much better it was. But um, Yeah. I mean, how many people are really going to prefer a T over a touring? <laughs> yeah. But, but I think, you know, listen to David's story if you haven't listened to it already, everyone. Um, it's a really good one. And I think it's really good hit the progression. You know, like he started off one of his main cars, too, which is worth a fortune now. And I looked at, I looked it up because I remember seeing one, the Walkinshaw, Walkinshaw, Walkinshaw Commodore. Commodore's uh-huh. an Australian car. For people that don't know, it's a, like an Australian family car, but they also do muscle car versions of it. Um, so David had that car. I think they're selling, I think I saw one when I checked and it was about 300K. And I think they said it could go to 750,000 Australian dollars, that car, that Commodore. Um, he's also owned Get BMWs. Away. E39 M5, which he liked, A40 CI, and he recently had that M2, which he sold um, to get into the Carrera T, which he really enjoyed, and he chipped it, Steve, like you did to your A1M. Yeah, he chipped it and put an exhaust on it, and he took it to Eastern Creek. He was driving it around the track, so really enjoyed that car. Yep. Um, And David mentioned that Burroughs people too, which you mentioned before, right? The track days were really well done. Yeah, Burroughs track days are really in Australia. Um, I haven't looked, I haven't done a search for it yet. Is there a website for that? Have you come across it? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't looked in a very long time, but um, somebody ages ago when we were talking track days suggested that that was a good way, a good introduction to kind of um, track days for people that had never really sort of done it before and were, had, you know, tentative about putting a nice car on track and also um, getting the right sort of degree of training sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think everyone that listens to the podcast wants to wants to hear you say you've had your GT3 on the track at one day. They all want to hear it. They always like send me messages saying, when's Steve going to take his car on the track? Mm, probably never. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd like to do it. I'd like to do it. But uh, it's funny, like um, I'd never even considered the um, insurance thing. Like I'd never looked into if I kind of were to decide to go out to Eastern Creek. I'm assuming I don't have to get like a special coverage for the day to kind of track um, put the thing on the track. And God knows how much that extra day costs. Experience though, isn't it? It's worth it. Um, oh. Stephen in Sydney, 66 underscore 912. I hope that's right. I think it is Stephen. Um, hi, Stephen. Um, Stephen had a big, uh, when I was down in Oberon, Steve, I sent you the, um, mm. the video, I think. And Stephen's on the WhatsApp group. You'll see Stephen on there. Um, mm-hmm. And he sent the he had a couple of images of his bumper how it was a bit peppered from the or a bit messed up from the stone chips, but the one that distressed mm-hmm. me the most and like he said these people enjoy driving the cars. One of the cars was a Ferrari TDF and and I'm hoping yep. yeah the Ferrari TDF and had a big chip stone that had like damaged the bumper like cracked the bumper. But I guess yep. if you drive your cars you're going to get that sort of damage to it, right? Yeah. I just did, um, as you know, like uh, Marco and I just did a putty run on was that Monday? Was that Monday? Yeah, Monday, two days ago. How was that? Awesome. Really good. You know, like finally the weather was sort of dry, so it wasn't kind of greasy roads, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I was an am just hell tired. My youngest, I know I, I keep push called uh, podcast is a forum for me to vent. <laughs> <laughs> um, how tired I am, but my little one is even worse than she's ever been. Oh, really? Um, yeah. She just doesn't want to 
she doesn't want to sleep when she wakes up in the middle of the night. Now she uh, refuses and just starts throwing tantrums basically and you can't do a single thing to kind of get it to just wow. calm down. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of stupidly tired, like walking dead tired. Um, but it was good to get out. We we went and did putty, drove putty, a uh, little, not kind of crazy early start. There weren't many trucks on the road. Uh, we almost had them to ourselves, which is pretty good. Um, nice sunny day. How's the front of your car since you don't have PPF? It's fine. Although I was going to say, sorry, the reason why I mentioned this too was um, I noticed I picked up two little stone chips, but, you know, like... Um, if, on the bumper or on the hood? Uh, one on the fender and one on the... Two on the, yeah, one on the hood. But they're tiny and, like, I'm just going to touch them up. Like, my car is not perfect. You know, like, I know I've kind of done this whole ceramic thing and I'll answer the thing yes. that you yes. mentioned to me about, like, um, washing it and stuff like that. But, like, overview is that, yes, I care about my car. Yes, I'm super fussy, blah, blah, blah. But the whole point to the car is to drive it. The best part of the car is driving it and doing, like, a drive like Marco and I did um, on Monday or the one that we did previous couple of weeks, like there's no point sort of, you know, sort of fussing over it and worrying about it and stuff like that for me if I don't drive it. So um, it makes you just realise it once you kind of get out and even though you can hear noises, you're following a truck for a minute and all of that sort of stuff and or if it's kind of pissing down with rain and you know that the road's greasy, it just means that you just wash it afterwards. And if it gets a stone chip, whatever, it's fine. Like, car's meant to be driven. I think the thing with the PPF is, is the PPF is not going to stop a stone if it, go, if it cracks your bumper. You know what I mean? And no, that's the point I was saying about the Ferrari. It. You know, like if, if a stone hits it hard enough and it hits it hard enough, PPF is not going to stop the damage, correct? Yep. yep. PPF will stop the, the basic spray of damage, you know, the yep. little sort of peppering and stuff like that. Um, yep. and, and David talks about it in his episode, how his GT3, when he, when he got it from Porsche Den, it was actually a little bit peppered on the, on the arches on the front. I think he had a bit of stone damage, which he had repaired Yeah, mine for mine a car like that, that only too. has 8,000 kilometers, you know what I mean? But, but Porsches are yep. so wide, they're low. Um, I had the unfortunate pleasure, you know, at the moment, because I've got a lot of errands to run because I'm yep. trying to get all these things done very quickly. Um, driving around the city here, as you know, Stephen, you used to daily your GT3, so you know what it's like. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, last Friday we went out um, in that rain, and I thought it would be yeah, okay, it but, it, but it wasn't. Yep. It was bucketing down, and just after the hail, um, and then the hail stopped here in, in where I am, and then yep. we went out, and I had to park on the side of a road, and this road was the back of um, Beaconsfield in New South Wales, you know, and then it was like... Yep. In Sydney, and then the road had so many potholes, and like at one point, I just got completely drenched because the truck just went through the pothole, and all the stones came up and hit me. And I had my car parked there, and I have to admit, I moved the car. I had to move the mm. car; it was just annoying me. And then I had this key issue, you know. But what I was going to say is, I, I couldn't daily the nine eleven. Like, I it, it makes me think now more and more, more, more and more that I need a Macan or I need a Cayenne or I need something that's like a like a. A, a bigger car and I, I struggle because uh, I go to Woolworths and I go to Woolworths and Alexandria and I, and here I am in my stupidity twice I've done it and I've done it twice and I get very annoyed about it I can get huh. into that car park trying to get out of that effing car park is just you know it scrapes my car and it's scraped my car it's already scraped it I've already lost paint so it's done already I'll, I'll counter your perspective with the the opposing one which is you can daily your car. And you've got a Macan. No, 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 no. It's not about that. There's two different things. Like one of them is like if you need a more practical car because you need more space and all of that sort of stuff, absolutely fair. But um, if it's because you're worrying about your car, then I think that's different because the thing about that is, like I was saying to you before we started recording, was like unfortunately I reckon Sydney weather is Sydney weather now. Like it's shit. Like it rains it rains relentlessly. If you're trying to find a gap in the weather to kind of go for a nice drive, you'll never, you'll never be able to kind of sync it up. So blah, blah, blah. Like it just is what it is. The roads are terrible as well because, you know, government doesn't spend any money on it. So there's always potholes and like loose gravel and rocks everywhere. Okay. So to me, those conditions will never change. Like what needs to change to me is like my mindset, which is fuck it. Don't worry about all that sort of stuff. Just get out and drive the car because if, if all those things start to hold you back, um, like, you know, 
fair, fair enough if you're kind of talking about a career GT or something like that, or something like really, really, really valuable, like yep. a museum piece. But if it's not that, then I just no, kind of go, no, nah, fuck it, just drive. It's not that. It's the enjoy. It's the, it's the enjoy factor. It's the enjoyability of it, right? Um, yep. Yep. And like I said, bad park, no parking, Sydney. You know, typical Sydney things. Typical Sydney things. City things. No parking. Yep. Shitty roads. Yep. Potholes. Every car park, every driveway is made for four-wheel drives because everyone has a four-wheel drive. Everyone has an SUV, right? And they're not made yep. for low cars. You know, lift kit, if you had a lift kit, fine, I could go into those places. But not being able to go into a car park because my car scrapes too much on the way out is frustrating because yep. it makes everything yep. take longer, Steve. And unfortunately, you know, living in London and living in Bahrain, deliveries uh-huh. are, are quick. You know, this, this, this uh-huh. thing in Sydney, and I'm going to have a rant here, this thing in Sydney where everything <laughs> takes so long to get delivered is driving me crazy. I, bought, I ordered coffee from Nespresso, and I know this is like first world problems, as people say. It took two yeah. weeks for the coffee to arrive. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But if you're yeah. limited because you can't go to get things, then you have to rely on the delivery system. And if that was London, no problem. Yeah. Easy. But it's Sydney, and it's not. And that, that's the problem. And, you know, the enjoyability factor, I went up to the coast on Sunday, as I told you, I went to see huh. my brother's brother. Huh. Um, and that was, that was a great drive. I, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I left. I woke up a little bit late, so I left at seven. There was no traffic. Yeah. Um, the car felt amazing. Like it feels so good at the moment. It really does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It feels like it's got more power. It feels like it's more planted on the road. The steering feels better. The 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 movement of the car is definitely feels stiffer to me. It is. It is more. It, it's better than before. It's not as uh-huh. not that it was you know sway or, or or uneven or you know not planted but it it does and it's not mind over matter it definitely feels better and the shift definitely feels better do you know what i mean yep. the shifting feels yeah, yeah, better cool. um Absolutely. and coming back on a little bit of twisty road just for a second and then cutting back into um uh cutting back into the uh, on the hawkesbury bridge there whatever it's called um brooklyn yep. you know it felt better it felt oh, it felt yeah, really yeah. yeah the car felt really good and that's the first time i've actually driven it out of the city properly and felt it and it does actually feel really really good you know, but yeah. I wasn't worried about Stone Chip said, but I worry when I walk, drive in the city and it's just like, just, just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. And I think maybe it's, I'm going to say like a, you know, like a baby here, but the manual transmission in heavy traffic is, is a struggle. It is a struggle, but it's not, you know, it's not that I can't do it, but I find it, it's not relaxing. It's not relaxing. No. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I know people are going to say, what are you talking about? It's a daily. It's not really. It's not really. It depends on the weather. It depends on the weather. Yeah, I think you can easily daily it, um, but that's just my perspective. Yeah, but you have the choice, though. See, this is the thing. You say that, but you got you know you just said you went out to coffee the other day and you took the Macan instead of taking the GT3. You could have took the you yeah, could have taken the GT3, yeah. but you didn't. Why didn't you? But, See, that's but, a, when you have the choice. No, no, no. But for twenty something years, I dailyed a nine six four and a nine nine three when I didn't have a second car, <laughs> and I did daily a, a GT3. Like I do have the choice now, but that's because it's a family car. Who like, dailies an air cooled? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you, you can easily do it, and the clutch isn't too heavy, and all of that sort of stuff. Like it's a dailyable car. Like definitely, definitely, definitely. Like Sydney and like conditions and the streets and the parking and stuff is just kind of shit. But um, it's uh, what I guess my point is more just that like as soon as you kind of get another car that you kind of care about in any way whatsoever, like unless it's like some shitbox kind of Corolla or a higher car. Unfortunately, I reckon you still have some of, not not all of the worries that you're talking about, but some of them, like, you know, yeah. worrying about somebody kind of dinging your car or parking on the side of the road and the truck kind of comes along and all of that sort of stuff. Like, absolutely. So that, and that's just what I meant by, I think, partly it's mindset. Like, and I think this kind of goes hand in hand with um, what's going on with Porsches or enthusiast cars because they're becoming so valuable again. Yeah we're all kind of pandering to that and we're kind of getting more sort of conscious of all of that stuff and we're treating it like a really precious thing, which it is. Like, don't get me wrong, it definitely is. But it's just how it's interesting that it's a contradiction to the the idea that, um, you know, the best part of the car is just, you know, sitting in it and driving it, even if that does sometimes mean kind of driving in traffic or whatever else. Yeah, true, true. I mean, it's, you know, it's precious to the point where it costs you so much money, but even if, you know... Damage is fixable. Damage is repairable. Look at my front bumper. You know, it doesn't take much to do it, and it's perfect again now, and it looks fine. Yeah. And I was thinking about that with my old one, actually, because it had PPF on it, right? And I was thinking about how bad yep. it was, yep. even with the PPF. Are you going to PPF this one? I'm still I'm still waiting for the four weeks to end, but I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about it. 
I'm still right. thinking about it. I mean, they recommended that I should do the whole it's front costly. end, not just the bumper. Yeah. bumper. Um, yeah. Uh, Stephen recommended the the place in Sydney. I can't remember the name now. Yeah, Sydney Premium. Yeah, it? that place. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so expensive apparently they, though, right? Apparently they're very good. I don't think it's that expensive. I mean, I tell people what it was. I think it was three thousand for the front end of a nine eleven. Three thousand Australian dollars. Um, yeah. But that's correcting it, I think, as well, and, and making sure it's all right before they put it on. I thought that was okay yeah. for a full front end, because I think that means that the bumper is probably about a, about nine hundred, eight hundred, which is what I thought it was. And I think um, the hood is usually about twelve or thirteen hundred if you do a hood. I remember from some other place I saw online. So I think three grand for everything is not bad. I haven't decided whether or not to do it. And I was trying to think back to my bumper that just came off, Steve, the one that you said should, yeah. I should have kept. And it wasn't that bad. You know, I remember there was a couple of little nicks. There was one near the light that had sort of yep. pushed the PPF near the light. There was yep. a couple down low. But all in all, if I, if I was thinking they would have been stone chips, it's not that bad. You know what I mean? So Yeah, well, I, so like if you're trying to judge it, I think we had this conversation on text a little while ago. If you want to see what, you know, like, you know, the usage of my car, it's not daily anymore. Um, it goes on sort of, you know, fun drives, fun weekend drives, all that sort of stuff. My bumper, my front bumper is freshly painted, like brand new bumper, freshly painted as of what, maybe about three years, is it? Maybe even longer, longer about three or four years. Yeah. You can have a look at it and see um, like, how you feel about like how kind of worn and chipped and stuff like it is. It's definitely chipped, but I don't think it's, to okay. me, it's not so kind of unsightly that I kind of go, Ooh, whatever. And for me, when it gets to the point where it is a little bit like that, then, you know, for a thousand bucks, I'll go visit um, Pierre at Atlas and just get it redone basically. When you had it resprayed the last time, mm. it didn't, you didn't think maybe I should get PPF? Did it come in? Because I know you're not really, you're a bit yeah, anti PPF, yeah, yeah. right? But you didn't do it. Was there a main reason why you thought, mm, was, it, was it just the money? Was it just the cost or was it something else? Um, I pondered, I, so I, yes, I definitely pondered it. I've got like my cousin with the M3 who keeps talking PPF2. And it's a similar point of view, which is, I guess I'm sort of expressing here, which is, um, yes. I, I understand the point of PPF. The reason why I choose not to kind of do it is that I had it on the 993 and I never really thought it was that good, but th this was a very, very long time ago when um, the material I think was in its infancy kind of yeah. thing. So yeah. like I know that it's much better and I know that if it's installed properly and you can't see the edges, that it'll be better again. But um my experience of that was that it never looked and felt as good as just like really good paint work, like nice clean paint that's either waxed or coated or whatever it is. Right. Um, and that as an example, like um, if I just wrapped the bumper or the whole front end, like the, the, the front lid, as you're sort of considering yes. the next issue I would have with that, which is Pandora's kind of box is that I will know that, you know, part of like, the bit that lines up against the lid versus the front wings isn't wrapped. So there's going to be a difference in that kind of surface from there to there. So then you kind of go, oh, shit, should I just kind of do the whole car kind of thing? Um, you mean where it sees and, the door? Because you're doing the whole front, so you're saying the door will be different. The, it'll it'll the front look different? Wing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's, a, there's always, like, going to be a difference between the surfaces but somewhere along the line, and then all of a sudden... Which is probably um, why know, it's they... It's getting really dear. Like, because, like, I personally yeah, kind of go. But that's probably why they recommend the whole front. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I personally kind of go three grand. Shit, that's a lot of money. Um, it is but, a lot. You know, I'm a tight ass. So, well, it's a lot. And, and you know, I know you're going to be taking your car to 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 Pierre. I think in the new year, right? You're going to mm. look at the bumper, the rear bumper. Would you yep. be tempted when it's with Pierre because they're so good there at Atlas? Would you be tempted yep. to say, why don't you just do my front bumper as well and get rid of those stone chips? Let's just do no. both of them. No. Nope. No, like when, when I had the front done, I asked the previous kind of panel place about doing the rear and they, they could have done that at the time. I just sort of never did it because I was being like a bit stingy again. Um, uh, no, like see the front bumper, this is sort of what I'm getting at, I guess, which is the front bumper is chipped definitely, but it's not that kind of bad that I can't live with it and I kind of get out my little you know syringy needle thing and I go and fill in the little sort of chips and it's just good enough because my point of view is that 
yes, I want my car to be as nice as I possibly can do, but I do realize that there's a boundary with it because if I keep kind of worrying to that degree, then it will stop me from kind of going yeah, out yeah. for a fame. Yeah, and no, no, that's understand. what I definitely don't want to do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that worried with stone chips. I mean, I'm a little bit more worried now because the bumper's just been redone. And, you know, uh-huh. and Pierre talking about the paint and how paints have changed and, you know, the paints aren't as good as what they used to be and they're very thin and sure. all this. You know, all those things come yep. into mind. But that's, that's yep. just modern cars. In fact, the change in paint technology and the removal of lead and all these things that have happened to paint, yep. you know, because we always talk about how, you know, in the 70s and 80s, people didn't PPF their cars. They didn't PPF their Porsches or their Ferraris, really, right, because yep. it wasn't yep. around. But maybe that's because also the paint was harder. The paint was, you know, more meant for a car maybe the paints now are so thin and so soft that this is what's put this whole ppf thing as as a major thing and you know i'm not big on these protection things it's like the watch protection stuff you know it it annoys me that people put ppf on their watch like just let it get scratched for god's sake you know it's okay it's a watch yeah and that's how i feel about the car which is like you know if it collects a little bit of stuff here and there then that's just you know part of the deal it's part of the experience but i think to your point um i remember talking to somebody who said that there was a relatively big difference when the Porsche got sort of properly bought out by Volkswagen when they lost their reverse takeover. Right. Um, and like, um, I'm assuming they started to kind of use slightly different paint because it was Volkswagen, you know, group <laughs> as opposed to independent. Not that there's anything wrong with Volkswagen. Sort of said, yeah, but I think, <laughs> so what was that? Like about 991 onwards? Yeah, I think so. Or late 997 onwards? Late, um, wasn't it 997? Late 997, not yeah, early. mid. Um, that the paint's sort of like quite a bit softer and not as good and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's true or not. Like somebody like Pierre would be able to kind of answer that, but I'd be quite interested to know. Well, you know, I always said, remember that the paint on my A4 was terrible. Like that A4, I think I had it for like a few months and it had so many stone chips on the front bumper which I never, ever got fixed, but it just got worse and worse. Yeah. It was really yeah. peppered, that A4. And I know yep. you had one. I don't know if you had the same thing, but that was yeah, that, that paint my, was terrible. My S3 was black. Yeah, yeah. no, it was terrible. It's terrible. Hey, um, what was I going to say? Uh, the wheel repair, I didn't touch on that last week, and, and you hmm. know the story, Steve, and I've had a chance to look at it in sunlight and feel it. And are you it. satisfied? Yeah, and just so the listeners know, Steve recommended, I don't know if I'll give a shout-out or not, but Steve recommended a guy. I mean, I contacted Pierre about it at Atlas, Mm. And he had a mm. guy in um, Ataman who was really busy, and that was about getting the whole wheel done. Um, yep. In the end, I used the wheel repair guy in Sydney that Steve has used before that comes around to yep. the comes around to your house or your apartment. I actually went yep. out there because he said he needed a flat surface and room to, to work, and the car park is quite busy, so I couldn't give him that. So I just drove out there, which was easy. Um, yep. Really nice guy, like you said, really really nice guy. Um, yep. Did the wheel quite quickly said it was very thick the paint he did make the point though he said this is a really quality job this paint he said mm-hmm. whoever did this has done a really good job this line is just perfect um mm-hmm. so he did actually compliment chris at xl wheels because chris at xl wheels did my um wheels uh, and i know yep. chris listens to this on and off and i have contacted chris about the wheel and i did get some information from him so thank you chris to pass on to the wheel repair guy when i was just talking to him just so i knew what the process was um yep. but he did it really well can you pick it I can, I can. Yep. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how I pick it because I want you to see it. So to see if you yep. can pick it. And I can yeah, see cool. what he's done and I understand why he's done it. No one else will notice it, Steve. No one else will notice yep. it. Um, yep. And it's, it's perfect. He had to, you know, the chip was only a very small chip. It was like, what, two centimeters. He had to, when he pulled it off when I was standing there, um, yep. he didn't cut his finger, but he just pulled off the chip. Yep. And he said he had to do it about that much. I'm yep. showing Steve it's about, I don't know, 30 centimetres. He had to like blend it in that much. It. Yeah, yep. just to get the, because um, of the thickness of the paint. But yep. he did a really good job. The, the silver matches up. Everything looks good. Like I said, I can just see two things. There's two things that I know it's been done, but no one else would yep. notice it. And for, tempor- uh, for a temporary measure, because I was saying to you, I was just going to get another wheel done. I was just going to get Chris at XL just to give me another, find me a wheel and just yep. redo it and send it, which would have been a very expensive yep. exercise and probably a little bit crazy yeah i think i think i responded to you with that's madness which i still think it is um like it's cool like because if you kind of go well you're not quite happy with the sort of the sort of mobile wheel repair kind of thing that's cool because you know that's what you pay for like it's only 100 and whatever 150 was it 130 bucks 
120 or 130, yeah. No, wait, look, yeah. I, I remember, yeah, so, and I, I forgot though, I remember your 1M and I remember yep. when you had that, one of the times when you had it repaired, I remember <laughs> you said you had it repaired and I remember walking yes. past your car and looking at it and going, wow, that's a good job. I can't see yep. it. So I do yep. remember that and that's probably what made me go to this guy and get it done um, yeah. because I do remember looking at yours going, oh, yeah, it's, that's, that's good enough. You know what I mean? Um, so it was good. Well, it was good. I mean, it's done I now and it makes me feel better. Yeah, I suppose that's the point, like with the kind of um, those sorts of cheaper repairs because like obviously you kind of go, well, if you can't live with it, I'm cool. Like, you know, get the whole get the whole wheel sort of done and it will match properly and then you won't have like that sort of little niggling kind of thing but it's just sort of what you kind of spend on it. Like and I, I think, said, you can't really notice it, Steve. You know, Right. Part of it will just sort of be too, like I, I still think part of it is a psychological bit for me where I kind of go like, you know, same conversation with stone chips or whatever else. Like it hurts the first time when you look at it and you discover it and stuff like that. A couple of weeks later, you know, you've sort of gone, oh, it kind of annoys me, but it doesn't annoy me enough to do anything about it. Yeah. And then three months later, it's like, I really couldn't be bothered. Just leave it. And it's perfectly fine. I can live with it. You know, yeah. like it's just that moment where you kind of get really wound up about something, but then with a bit of time, you just don't really feel like that Yeah. Um, afterwards. Well- well, as you know, I damaged that wheel on the Sunday, I think, when I was trying to do the yep. install of the sills. And on the yep. Friday, I, I was getting the wheel repaired. I couldn't, I didn't want to look at it. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah, about yeah, looking yeah. at it. And now I don't, I look at it and it's done. It's fine. Do you know what I mean? It's done yeah. and, and it's all fixed and it's great. Um, you know, I let it go for the three or four, three days or whatever he said to let it go for. I think two days, I let it go for three days before I washed it. And then it was fine. It's all good. Yeah. Um, but Are I've had a problem with my. I want to it and stuff. Recoat. Oh, I didn't think about that. Shit, I didn't think about that. Good point. I have some stuff just, downstairs. Yeah, I've got to recoat that. Just do that, the, outs, outer the ridge. Rim. You're right. I haven't done that. Thanks for reminding me. I'll do I that. It makes a difference, right? The coating. Yes. The coating really does um, sort of help. Like wheel coatings help with the brake dust and stuff like that. If you are getting new wheels or you have old wheels, clean them up. Put the gear on whatever it is. Quartz coating. I think I've got the gear on one. You're right, Steve. Mm-hmm. It works so well and it's so easy. I just clean my – I don't put wheel cleaner on my wheels. I just do it with the soap. Yeah, not a while. And I yeah. don't need to put the wheel cleaner on because they don't get dirty and they're not pitted yeah. and, you know, it's probably almost time for another coating of the whole wheel. But you're right, yeah. I'll just do the outer edge. But those wheel coatings, for the small amount of money you pay for them, I think I paid $70 or something and I still have yep. another application left. Um, it's worth it, don't you think? Well worth it. I I only used um, when I just worked on my car. I didn't bother buying the um, specific kind of wheel stuff. I just used the same body stuff because I couldn't be asked. Yeah. Um, but spent so much money on like it's hundreds of same. detailing it's products. Exactly the same. Uh, I'm sure it's not. I bet you that there's sort of like a difference to it. But you know, even just using the sort of body kind of stuff on the wheels, like um, I, I, it does make that bit kind of easier to wash, sort Boy. of thing. You made me do the bloody wax thing when you told me, oh, I wax my wheels. So I do that every now and again too. I put a bit of wax yep. on them. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that crazy. That's, I know, but that's uh, a bit crazy. Nah. It's sort of on, yeah. top of the, on top of the quartz coating. I don't know whether it's needed, but it, it kind of makes the wheels come up really nice when you put the wax on them. Though. Yeah, 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 it does. <laughs> but it's it a does. lot of work. I don't do it that often every now and again. Hey, I had a problem with my key and I know you're an Apple guy as well, right? And I don't know whether this is a, a problem or not. And I started searching yep. about it and it seems like some people are having issues so i have a key um and i got a couple of air tags right i got a couple of personalized air tags engraved air tags um uh-huh. and i put one on my key i also have yep. um, one in my car as well thanks to nick and my friend in london nick who's said i'll put it in your car as a tracker so i put one in the car as well mm-hmm. hidden of course no one will find it um <laughs> yeah. so i put one on my key and it's on a short key ring and it's resting against my other key, my Porsche key. Yes. And I think ever since I did that, I was having issues unlocking the car. I couldn't, it wouldn't work. The, the key fob wouldn't work. And then my alarm really? is doing Sweet. stupid things. My alarm was like, I would unlock it with the key, put it in the ignition, and then my alarm would go off, right? And I was talking about this last week and I thought, okay, the battery on the key is gone. I went and bought three batteries, replaced the battery yeah. on that key and the other key. Yeah. Went back. And then in the rain last Friday, same thing happened. I couldn't lock the goddamn car. It was like going crazy. Um, so then I thought, okay, I'm going to switch the key. I'm going to change the key to my other key yep. and see yep. if that works better. And? At the same time, I had a little key fob that I bought, um, which had the air tag in because Porsche yes. doesn't make them. And then I changed it. Natasha gave me a, um, 
longer Belkin sort of one that dangles down a bit. So I put yep. that with the yep. new key. So I don't know whether that's done it or the key. But the new key, the, my other key works fine. There's no problem at all. And then I just search and you on... Have all the stuff up? Yeah. And then I just search online, Steve, and people have been having that problem where the air tag is interfering with the um, key remote. So if you've How got... Weird. It, yeah, it's interfering with it. So I don't know whether you have it on your car key, and I was wondering if you do and if you've experienced that. No? no? Yeah, so I... It, I think it. I don't know. Is so it, I still, I still don't know. Aren't passive though? This is what I mean. I don't know. And then I kept finding okay. threads about it, Steve. And but that, but maybe my key is faulty. See, I don't know how you work out if your keys are fault. If your keys just fritzed, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just fritz the other key. Doesn't well. So I thought like an AirTag isn't that just sort of like slightly fancier RFID technology, which is passive. There's not like there's a. Mm. I guess there's a battery in it, right? Yeah. Okay. Ba- I don't know. I don't know. But it was when it's close. Some people were saying when your air tag is close to your key, touching yep. your key, is when they had the issue. When it was a, separated slightly from the key, they didn't yep. have the issue. So that's why I put it on the longer sort of loop so it's a little bit away from the key. And since I've done that, I haven't had an issue. But the thing is, that's the other key. What I should do is go back to my first key. Put that yep. air tag on the way it is on this key and we'll see, see if that yeah, yeah. see if it works. But it was just not unlocking. It's just not working. So I just thought maybe the key's on its on its way out. But see what happens. But something to keep in mind, huh? Do you lose your keys a lot? No. Okay. I just yeah, like, I don't lose my keys, so that's why I've never had much of an interest in an air tag. Yeah. No, I don't know why. It was just one of those spur of the moment things. I was bored and I yeah. bought them. Just bought a four pack. Yeah. Gave Tasha one. I kept three. <laughs> Just like to know how it works. Um, what else, Steve? Uh, tell us about the thing. You know, the WhatsApp group. Everyone wants to know why. Uh, I know that Luke and Newcar Concierge made the made the comment on there. Um, why uh-huh. it takes you so long to wash your car if you've got ceramic coating? He said someone said you must be doing something wrong. Uh, and I can't actually answer whether or not I'm doing anything wrong or not. Like as far as I know, I'm sort of you know going through the motions of stuff that I've kind of seen and read. Um, I think part of it was because, so since I made that comment, whenever that was two weeks ago, I've washed the car twice. I've been on two drives and one of them rained. And then the last one, which was a Monday, um, didn't. And part of it is because I had been driving in really grimy, dirty roads. So like lots and lots of road grime. So maybe that's sort of why at that point it took two and a half hours Maybe, I don't know. I'm not, and I'm not trying to make excuses. I think it's just um, trying to answer the question. Um, the other part of it might be because I live in an apartment block, so I don't have my own garage space and I've got to lug all this kind of stupid crap between a storage cage and a, and a parking space. Like I can't and I won't sort of literally kind of pick up a cartridge machine and put it on the passenger seat of the car and then drive across to the, the thing. So I'm backwards and forwards in between um, bits and pieces so that, could account for some of it. Um, do you need to do the foam wash though? Can I just ask you that question before you go any further? Do you need to do the whole foam thing? Because that foam thing, I know it looks cool when, when you see people on Instagram take mm. photos of it and people do yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but it takes a hell of yep. a long time, right? Do you really need to do the foam wash thing? Um, I don't actually know the answer to that because I can't tell. I said the same thing to my cousin with the um, M3 who's into his sort of stuff. Like, I can't tell whether or not, like, when you foam your car up, the, the, the idea of it is that it's supposed to kind of pick up and encapsulate, you know, grit on your car and then it sort of falls down or then when you rinse it again, it's supposed to take some of the stuff off your car. So you, the idea is that um, by the time you then get your wash mitt and you dunk it in the bucket and then you kind of start contacting the car, it's supposedly taken away as much as it possibly can. The problem with it is that it never takes enough away that you don't use the mitt. You always have to use the mitt. You've got to agitate, otherwise you're not cleaning your car properly. So I can't actually answer that. I can't I can't personally notice the difference yet. Right. So I don't know. See, I find when, when I came back from overseas two yep. years, right, and I told you it had the yep. indoor cover on it, and yep. even though when I lifted the cover off, there was black underneath, black grid, and that could yes. be because my car was being started up by my brother-in-law and whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. when I went to wash it the first time, you know, just the hose at a certain pressure, you see all that black stuff coming off. You can see the dirt yes. coming off. 
So yep. this is why I, I, wor- I wonder about all these things that you, you know, these things, all these tools yep. that you do. Do you really need, need them? You know, do you need the foam thing? Because just like pre- water at pressure will take off most of that grit. You know what I mean? And if you wash the car in a two bucket system, well, then aren't you sort of doing the same thing and it's quicker? Yeah. You know, that's I think, what I worry about. So, y- yes, I know exactly what you're saying because that's no different from me kind of going, well, when I put a carcher, like a pressure, you put a pressure washer on your car, isn't that blowing basically most of the crap off your car? But uh, it's not until, like, so if you then, like, in your instance, um, you as soon as you still put like a clean microfiber um, on your car, you're still gonna and you wipe across the panel you, and you look at your microfiber, you're still gonna have crap on there. So the car is still dirty, um, and it's right. not until you actually gonna do that. And I think that's the thing. Like oh, okay. foam doesn't get it off. Pure pressure, whether it's a hose or a pressure washer, right, um, doesn't do it. Whether or not the foam actually kind of helps, I've got no idea. I really, you know, I've been doing it because I know that's what you're supposed to do, um, but. So, like, you know, look, the last two times I washed my car since I sort of commented that it took me whatever it was, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, yeah. Um, The second time, like the first time I did after that, it took me an hour and a half. I was trying to rush through it a bit quicker and also because I had a wife waiting for me. Um, So I managed to do it in an hour and a half, which in my books is still quite long. Um, I did it yesterday and I think it took me probably – an hour and three quarters kind of thing, but I was taking my time. I was just kind of goofing off. So how long does it take? You said, but Marco has ceramic coating on his, right? Does his take as long to wash? So so I was having this conversation with Marco kind of going, man, like this, this whole ceramic deal, like, you know, what a pain in the ass. Um, I know he's, he didn't coat his own car Um, when he bought it. it, um, He knew that it had been detailed and coated. Marco's a fussy man, like, you know, um, I think if we were having a competition, he'd be maybe somewhere between you and me. <laughs> so me, <laughs> me being, a, me being a eight, you being a 11, him what, probably what being like 11? a 10. <laughs> I was down the other side. What are you talking about? No, man, you're way fussier what than are you I talking am. talking about? But, so I think he's somewhere in between us. And I'd sort of said to him, man, like, how long does it take you to, to kind of wash your car? Like, I can't believe it's it took me two and a half hours a couple of times. And he said that <laughs> he concurs um, that it takes him just as long, if not longer. I ah, think. So there you go. Um, and look, you know, I know this is all a bit of a laugh. Like a lot of this is sort of semi in jest, but I just think a big part of it is how fussy you are. It's, it's not, if somebody's sort of uh, saying like, I must be doing something wrong. It's like, yeah, what's wrong is in my head. It's <laughs> it's the degree of preciousness because yeah. you've gone through like 70 hours or whatever it is of just messing around with stuff. And if you're kind of getting to the point where you're super crazy meticulous um, because you've become so precious about it, that's the bit that's wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think for me, like, again, you know, what I coded my car about, two and a half, three months ago. Um, I think as time goes on, I'll just be less and less precious and that's when it's going to start to get quicker. Fantastic. Hey, um, did you I see, think... I, f- I just remembered something and I completely forgot to write it down. Have you hmm. seen the um, Duck and Whale uh, Boxster? Yeah. What yeah, do you think yeah. about it? Mm, interesting. I don't know. Um, I don't. The look I, of it's sort of mm. come back around. I'd, the red, you know, like the red kind of detailing and the sort of red painted, like the period sort of wheels for it and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't know. Have a, if anyone hasn't seen it, go to Duck and Whale's Instagram. Have a look at it. Yeah. Uh, I know a few guys subscribe to Duck and Whale. I don't know the guy personally. Yep. I've never met um, Lee that does Duck and Whale. Lee. Yeah. yeah. But um, I heard the story behind it. I heard a bit of a story behind it when I was at Order House. Um, I'm not going to share right. it, but I heard a bit of a story about it, which I shared with you off off recording. Oh, okay. Did um, Autohouse work on it? No, PRT. No, did. PR technology. PRT worked on it. Yeah. I think he's done. A, I think it's a. I think it's an interesting project, and I think it's good that people are, are doing this. I think you know people like Duck and Whale, you know, Porsche enthusiasts, Porsche. You know, I think it's a really good thing that they're doing this. Um, yep. I like the paintwork. I like how it sort of harks back to the early sort of spiders. I like that stripe, that stripe that goes across the bonnet, the burgundy type stripe, Steve. I've yep. seen that somewhere else before on an air cooled and I sent you a picture of it. I think it was a lime yeah, green yeah, one. Yeah. And I've always liked that idea of that stripe. So when I first saw the, the sort of uh, 
the the shots that he was putting out, just the hint of what was happening. Now the full yep. shots are out. I kind of like it. Yep. He's got the two colored yeah, wheels. Yeah. The interior looks quite nice. Um, obviously, they're all boxes. I think you can buy them. I think he's actually they're making. They've got a few of them, and they're going to they're selling them. I think. What's that? The Boxster. Oh, like it's not just one. Like- I think so, yeah. Oh, if you okay. read the post, if you go into Duck and Whale, I saw it this morning and I'm, I could be wrong, but it looks like, and this is something that I did actually hear as well, um, right. that they're actually, I think they're actually, uh, I think it's like a project where you can actually buy one, I think. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah, right. Um, but I, I like it. I think okay. it's good. I think it's pushing the boundaries a little bit. I think it's, you know, the boxes in everyone's sort of eyes at the moment, um, mind at the so moment, right I kind say. of car to be sort of tinkering with, if you know what I mean, like as opposed to taking a 964 and, you know, pulling that apart and all of that sort of stuff. Um, there's plenty of 986 boxes out there to kind of go exactly. and um, customise and personalise and sort of do whatever you want with it. But the thing, Steve, is that two-wheel colour thing. We saw that mm. on the uh, Sondervolch or whatever it is, Sondervats, how do you say it? That yellow and Don't black one. Me. The yellow and black one, remember? Had the black and the the oh, yellow yes, black okay. GT3. Yeah, that yeah, had the yeah, two, yeah. The, gotcha. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the duo sort of two-coloured wheels, remember? Which we kind of yep, liked. Yep, yep. We kind of liked. Remember yep. the black and the other coloured wheel it was really, you know. So they've done that with the red and the black wheels. It's kind of nice. Yep. I kind of like it. I haven't. What does the interior look like? I never. I. I didn't look at. Uh, look at it in depth. Yeah, I haven't got it up. I don't have my phone in front of me. Um, Alcantara, I think. But it's quite a nice interior. I, know, I think he lists all the people that have done all the work on it. But like I said, go and have a look at Duck and Whale if you guys haven't seen it, um, and check it out and see what he's done. I mean, it's a good. It's a good thing. Anything like that is a good thing. I think any kind of like. I'm guessing I know Lee's good mates with my new mate John at Pro Stitch. Um, so I'm guessing John kind of did the interior on it. I don't um, think he did. I, did, I don't. I, I don't have it in front of me, mate. I don't have my phone in front of me because I'm using it as a camera. But um, I don't think yeah, he did. Cool. You'd have to have a look on the site. I did see that great picture though on Duck and Whale the other day, and I know you're friends with mm. John at Pro Stitch. Um, mm. and people in Sydney would have heard of Pro Stitch, who does all the uh, Porsche upholstery and Porsche uh, retrimming yep. and stuff. And he yep. had all those rolls of fabric and he had that picture of that Carrera fabric, you know, the seat fabric. Did you see that image? Yeah, yeah. that Alex so, Holland did on his yeah, 9 So John has, he has some great fabric, you know, it makes you want to get a classic 911 and fix it up. Well, I visited John, I, I know you know this, um, a couple of weeks ago because he said to me he was working on a 70 911 that was his car that nice. he's now sold. Oh, he sold um, it? So the last... Yeah, the last time I visited him, he was working on it. He was crawling around on the inside, putting carpet um, under the um, front lid. And um, then he was sort of working on the um, the seats and the interior. So he nicely just sort of said, I'll come around like, you know, the car's finished. It was off kind of doing a couple of shoots and stuff like that. So it's going to be on social media at some point in time. Um and he said, um, come around and have a look at it. And it's like, man, he's, he spent so much time, the craftsmanship that he put into that um, that thing, it's um, pretty crazy. I still haven't seen it. Is I don't, yeah, I've not seen it. I've not seen it on social um, yet, but um, you will. You'll see it at some point in time. So it's sold. So, it's not up for sale. It's actually sold. He sold it before he'd actually finished it. Oh, really? I don't know, if, I don't know what I'm supposed to say or not say, but, yeah, like um, – because John moved um, workshop recently, and he had quite a few different cars. And I guess, I guess it makes sense if you're in that sort of space where he's obviously kind mm. of working on something of his own. Um, and I'm sure he's got lots of people walking into his workshop, kind of going, "I really like that car. I want it." Mm. He's a big bag of money. Um, <laughs> I love seeing all that old fabric rolls, though. I love seeing the fabric. You know that Porsche. I like that Porsche yeah, screw fabric in- seat fabric. That's so cool. In that post that you're talking about, there's sort of like a fairly leery bluish checker yeah. in it, yeah. checker fabric. Yeah. That's the one that he used on oh, really? this car that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the tartan checkered fabrics. I know that they're in Porsches, but I'm not a. I know Magnus Walker's a big fan of them too, but I'm really not a fan of them. That's why I'm not really keen on the the 75th anniversary or whatever yeah, it is, Australian GT3 Touring. Same. That that those seats. I saw another picture the other day. I just I don't like them. I don't like them. They're just not. yeah. Um, they I'm kind of the same, like yeah. Uh, even um, I start to tire of the um, Pepita in my car. I put no. the seats back in. Oh, really? I oh, know the Pepita's Some... nice. 
sometimes I kind of get a bit sick of it, but then like, you know, for me, it's like, oh, it's easy. I'll just rip them out and stick the plain Alcantara yeah, back in. I wish I had seats like that where you could just do that. It's so cool. I like the Pepita. Hey, I, I saw a car for sale the other day I was looking at. It's a very appealing car, actually. I really quite like it. It's a 991.2 Carrera S and it's mm-hmm. for sale in Melbourne. Um, yep. I think it was bought from Brighton Porsche, which is probably why it's like spec the way it is. Um, it's right. white. It's white. I don't think it's yep. Carrara white, but it's white and it's got red and black interior. Very nice. And one of the yep. options it had was Porsche GT3 side mirrors. I didn't realize you could option Porsche <laughs> GT3 side mirrors on a 991.2 uh, Carrera S, but obviously you can. And they, Would that just be termed aero kit? It doesn't have an aero kit though. It just has the mirrors. No, I know, but like um, because you kind of, you know, like when you go and upgrade – um, body parts on a standard car, like they kind of call that aero kit, but it effectively oh, right. is bits off a of GT3, isn't it? Yeah, true. It's a really nice one, though, Steve, for a career S, 901.2. It's PDK, though. But, uh, yeah, it's, but it's there's your daily. 229, it's actually quite a good price. 1,000, right. 229,000. Hey, yeah. um, what is the, talking about new 911s or new-ish 911s, um, mm-hmm. do we want to talk about that paint-to-sample thing that Porsche is doing? I don't know. I don't I'll really tell you my thoughts. It. I'll tell you my thoughts on it. This paint to sample thing, I kind of get annoyed yeah. when I read those articles because it's like, you know, if you could order a Porsche, if you could actually get your 911 or order one, which people obviously are struggling to do. I think when yep. David, I was speaking to David, you know, there was a new Porsche dealerships just opened in Newcastle. And oh, I, think, I think they said that he, I think he said that that dealer said that he'll only get two GT4 RSs. That's all he'll get. Yep. Yep. You know, and then the people that want them are calling from Sydney and Melbourne. Like everyone's calling from everywhere. And I think he said the dealer yep. is trying to sort of look after people fend, in the region yeah, first. Fend everyone off. <laughs> yeah. And it's like because there's a new dealer, you know, it's like a new watch shop, I guess, opening up. You're going to have plenty of watches. Yep. And it's like, you know, I, and I love reading these stories about Porsche doing this. And maybe it's more so overseas. I don't know. But, you know, you can get all these colors, 160 colors, and they know it. they've uh-huh. got a better process. And I love it. And I've been seeing, I have to say, I saw a Miami blue Macan yesterday. I saw the Mamba yep. green Macan yesterday. I keep seeing cloud crayon Macans. And I really yeah, like so. I really like when people do the Macans and those sort of cars in, in different colors. You know, that whole Nick mm-hmm. Murray kind of thing where he got the Mamba. I do you know like what? it. I wouldn't do Miami blue. I think cloud crayon looks good. I think Mamba green looks good. Um, I think the Carmine red looks good, but that's not PTS color, is it? They're just no. special colors. Carmine's cool. Yeah, yep. but Carmine's cool. Um, but I don't know. What do you think of all that? It's just more and more choices, but it's good to have more choice if you can actually order a car. Yeah, I didn't really get it. There was just that press release about expanding the paint to sample color range, but I thought people were kind of, well, if you could kind of get an order in, as you say, that you could spec that stuff anyway. So I didn't really understand what the purpose of that press release was, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I would still get a Taycan in frozen blue metallic. Nick, if you're listening, frozen blue metallic. Frozen Frozen, frozen blue frozen metallic. <laughs> hey, um, GT3. Some people have been lucky enough to get a new 992 GT3. There is, uh-huh. you know, I, I always say that people go and get them. I know we always know our friend JWW has got his Canary Yellow one or whatever it's called. People do get them. Signal. Yep. Signal Yellow. <laughs> people do get them. But there's a there's a thread on Renlist, and I'm guessing some of the listeners have probably seen it. And you pointed it out to me, Steve. There's a few issues with the, the new 992 GT3 with the glass. Yeah. Or the Perspex. Yeah, cracking glass. The lightweight glass. Apparently, um, a lot of people are having windows replaced because it's developing cracks and all that sort of stuff. But I think the point you made before is, is and I don't know whether you read that, the buffeting thing. You know, is that what it is when you open at speed that it's quite thin? Is that Somebody what's cracking that. it? Yeah. That could be a point. Yeah. That could be a good reason why it's happening. I don't know. Don't know. I know you'd be um, not particularly happy if you know your car, your brand new kind of car, started to develop cracks. Like uh, back in the day of my nine nine three, do you remember this? Um, there's a known issue with that, and if you turn the rear demister on, um, like in cold weather or foggy weather or whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> the rear window explodes, like it literally shatters. Really? Um, it's got a laminate on it, so it doesn't kind of go all over the place. Um, but it, and that happened to my car. Like I parked it, um, dropped somebody off. I came back to the car and they said, uh, we didn't touch anything, but, and you look at your rear window and it looks like when somebody tries to throw a brick through a, wow, I didn't know about that. A phone booth thing. 
So what, um, what's the solution? Replacing it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, like in that 993, it had some, I, I don't know the technicalities of it, but um, it is basically um, prone to if you use your reader mister on the thing. Um, okay. Uh, so, yeah, like slightly different thing with this one because obviously there's something to do with the lightweight class. Um, obviously does isn't quite up to scratch and um, is cracking on cars, so they're replacing it. But I know um, it would be very disconcerting. The thing is, you know, Porsche's used this Gorilla Glass before, before, right? It's Gorilla Glass, isn't it? I guess that's what I they so, use. Yeah. I don't know if that's the brand, but they've used it before. It's not, it's not new. So why is it happening on the GT3? Have they used it in? Have they used it more? Is it, you know, I don't understand why this wouldn't have happened before. It's just the shape of the the wind, the aero of the GT3. Was it was it TGE or his mate Archie um, on the nine nine one point one RS? Right. They, he had an issue with um, the lightweight, but it wasn't cracking. It was sort of like the whole thing wasn't seated properly. So, mm. I don't know. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Just those things. I, I, I was saying to you again off um, off um, mic that um, I guess with like all these sort of new cars, there's always going to be something wrong, you know, niggles here and there sort of thing. I guess like you'd much rather like breaking glass than, you know, engines on fire and, you know, IMS and stuff like that. But um even the 991.1 had that like, funny little thing where the um, there's apparently like really bad wind buffeting noise, and you've got to attach that little aerofoil on the um, just next to your mirror where your mirror next attaches to, your mirror. to the door. Yeah, I read about that one as well. And you kind of go, oh, surely the factory should have figured that out from the beginning, but they didn't. They missed it. You would it, think so, so. All the tests they do, but I don't yeah. know. I mean, does this this comes back to the fact you know when a new car comes out, do you really want to buy the first one off the line? Do you know what I mean? Because Porsche will obviously not fix things. Yeah, not if you yeah. can help it, right? You don't have to buy the next generation. It's not like buying a 992.2, but, you yeah. know, you don't necessarily, I guess it's that whole first year thing, isn't it? You know, wait for one year, let them sort of production get through what they're doing and let them fix up the little niggles that they can and then wait. I mean, look at the people, look at everyone that bought the 2015, 2014 GT3. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and then yeah. Porsche rectified it, but, you know. Um, well, and I think that's the point too, though. Like um, if you're in that lucky position, whether you've kind of, had one of these windows go on your 992 or whatever like you know it's a new car it's under warranty they're going to make good on it and they've got a history of making good on things like you know they don't they don't try to kind of you know dodge their kind of warranty claims and stuff like that it's just a pain in the ass to kind of have to you know go through all of this yeah. so hey um just on that 991.12 yes. did you did you wind up listening to that um podcast the Chris Harris interviewing um, AP? Not yet. I, I'm really behind on podcasts, so I haven't mentioned it, but I will listen to it and we'll talk yeah. about it. I haven't listened to it. You said it was really good. It's really worth listening to because just the one little nugget that I took from that, which I'd never heard before, um, which both of them kind of just, you know, started to talk about. So he, he, it's obviously because, you know, he's doing the PR rounds because GT3 has kind of come out, the newest GT3. Yep. He's kind of talking about all the sort of different generations of GT3. You know, yep. he slightly, I don't think he intentionally did it, but he semi-rubbished like the 996.1, um, uh, which I won't kind of get into now. But the thing I didn't realize was that they both said that, um the 991.1 GT3, the one with the engine issues, yes. actually sounds really good. Oh, really? I had no idea. Yeah, they both said that um, that's got a particular Before it catches engine on fire. And exhaust note to it. Yeah, that um, <laughs> is really unique to that. Wow. That's interesting. Um, that's interesting. Let's not bag 996. Yeah, they both said it sounded not, better. Let's not bag 996s because you heard Natasha's comment last week when she stepped in for you, right? Uh, what did she say about that bit? Oh, the, criticize, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> criticize the 996. Let's not upset the 996 GT3 owners, Steve. There's a few of them who listen to the podcast. So let's not upset them. I sat in Marco's car again, and um, I didn't find the interior that offensive. He, when we went for the drive-up putty, we kind of stopped at the little yep. sort of stop, and I sort of said to him, oh, um, can you take me for a spin in your car? I want to hear the exhaust again. I want to um, ask you, so, his exhaust was good? His exhaust sounds good from the, from outside. I want to ask you two questions. The first question I want to ask okay. is we're just talking about glass. I want to come back yep. to last week's episode, and I've got to read a review out as well. Um, yep. The glass, 
with your glass, you've got tinted. You've got tinted windows, right? Your car has tinted yep. windows. Yes. Have like you that. considered? And I've been looking into this, and I know I've mentioned it. And you probably think I'm yes. crazy. Yes. The thought crossed I my do. mind is that I will. I'm thinking about removing the tint from my car. I'm yes. worried about the rear window because of the demister, and I've seen those hell stories where it just pulls everything off or whatever it does. I don't know what it does. It does something, right? Or it's hard to get off the old tint. I've been thinking yep. about it because tint technology like PPF technology, like you've just mentioned earlier, yes. has improved yep. greatly over the years. I don't know what year my yep. car was tinted. I'm guessing it's a while ago. And I'm thinking... Probably from, probably from new. Your car was one previous owner? No, I don't think so. Two previous owners? Two, I think. It yeah. came from Perth too, didn't it? It was sold in Queensland and went straight to Perth. So I reckon, see, like um, both those states. Gold Coast Porsche. You, Gold Coast Porsche. Yeah. It was sold from. Oh, okay. Yeah. I bet you uh, cars, like if you could uh, get data, I bet you in Queensland and Perth, um, probably most cars have. Um, not factory. Tint Mine's not. Yeah, so it's aftermarket tint. But I was thinking, yeah. Stephen, I want to know what your opinion on this because you have tint and I know your tint's probably not that new either. Would you yeah, consider removing ones. your tint? See, I'm considering thinking removing it, and I think I still need the tint, right? It's too hot here. Um, mm -hmm. The sun's too strong. Yep. But maybe going not as dark and getting one of the new tints, which is obviously better technology, either the carbon or the ceramic. Is yep. that something you would consider? Um, I pondered it. When we bought um, my wife's car, um, it didn't have like – it didn't have tint on the front windows. It's that kind of weird look where the factory tints the rear, the rears, but not the front. So that's termed privacy glass. Um, and so I got the the two fronts kind of done and was talking to the guy about, you know, the different technologies and stuff. And I skimped on that car. I couldn't be asked kind of, you know, going the whole sort of fancy sort of stuff on it. Um, the PPF places they match the privacy glass and they have the they, they give you the benefits of ceramic and they give you the benefits of um, the carbon one. Yeah. I think ceramic's high enough, right? You don't really need the which one is which? I forget which one's higher, ceramic I don't or carbon. Know. I'm I'm not I'm not particularly well versed in any of that. Um, but I would kind of go when you were sort of talking about uh, ripping the tint off, I'd just kind of go, oh, me personally, it's too hot. The summer's like even even the drive on Monday. What yes. it was supposed to be ambient of about 22, 23 degrees. It was really hot on Monday. It was really hot on the road. Like I couldn't live without the tint. But what about replacing it though? That's my question. I'm not going to remove it. I'm thinking about updating mm -hmm. it, updating it to a better quality and taking down the color a little bit so it's not as black. A little bit, just not a fraction. Dark. Fraction. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I know like, um, uh, what do I think? Yeah, it could be. It could be worthwhile. I have no idea. Like the um, new technology tints. Not that expensive. Uh, what's your What's your version of not that Six expensive? Six or seven hundred. It says online. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't know. Don't know, mate. Like, I'm not as like when you. I notice, like, is it TGE? Um, always sort of kind of goes that um, uh, window tints look really. Uh, what's the word? Chavy? Yeah, he doesn't like I, that. I don't see that. Like I just kind of go, yeah, it's just it's fine. I don't have a problem with kind of darker windows. But I do like Ferraris and newer 911. You know, when you, I like when you can see in properly when you just see the original color. Like the old 911s, the classic ones, I don't think I'd yeah. want tint on a classic 912 or a <clears throat> 70s 911 or 73 yeah, 911. Sure. I'd rather it just sure, plain sure. with that because it's just the originality of it. I don't think you'd do it. Yep. Um, but I think on my car, yeah. see, I don't know when tint goes. I don't know when you can look at it, when you look through the tint of your window, when you think, you know, this tint has had its day. Like, is it really cloudy? Is it Because mine aren't scratched. They don't seem to be that cloudy. I, I don't know when you know if it's mine gone. Are. are they? Yeah. Well, does it actually kind of go as well? Like, um, maybe the only thing that really would degenerate. I know that, um, you know, like when they talk about back to PPF, when it starts to yellow, um, Apparently, that's not the material. That's the adhesive that's yeah. going yellow. <clears throat> True. Um, so, I don't know. I'm I don't know. Ready. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe that's a better thing to do than doing the PPF on the front. I'm not sure. Hey, can I, let to, me just read out. Sorry, go ahead. Talk to that um, Sydney Premium place for that. They, they, if they do PPF and they'll do window tints Yeah, they well. do. That's where, that's where I read about it. They've got all the yeah. details about the carbon and ceramic. I would. They seem like a great company. I, I would use them for sure, for sure. 
Where are they? Castle Hill? Castle Hill, yeah. Castle Hill. What is the company called? Sydney Premier Detailing, right? I forget the guy's name. Stephen told me. Premier or Premium? Yeah. Premier, yeah. No, they're really good. They answer me straight away when I ask them for a quote. I haven't got back to them, though. I've been a bit slack. Hey, I just want to read this one This one, uh, this one. one review, Steve, because the, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, I do know who this is, and they reach out to me on Instagram. Um, a must for any Porsche enthusiast. I forgot to read this last week. I don't know why I missed it. I think it maybe popped up afterwards. That's why. Um, a must for any Porsche enthusiast. Essential listening for any Porsche enthusiast. Michael and Steve deliver great Porsche-related Tasha. content in a genuine, easy-to-listen Tasha. manner without any of the usual hype and best you find on some similar podcasts best up to you i don't know how to read today i especially enjoy the owner's stories which conveys the experience and perspectives of porsche enthusiasts from all walks of life that's from thunder scepter australia thank you so much uh i really appreciate we really appreciate that review and the reviews help us get seen around the world they help us go help us go up the ratings we're going up the ratings very quickly steve we're getting more and more popular um that's just probably why things are becoming more and more busier um, but it is it is getting very popular. Hey, last week, get Tasha on. Na- Just last Tasha week, on. Natasha stepped in to your seat. She stepped into the <laughs> mic. I had, I had to use the pod track. I had to use the the fancy equipment, like like well known Porsche podcast people. Um, what did you think? It was good. It was good. Just she can do it all the time. I'm quite <laughs> happy for her to get her to do it every week. I, I think I sent her a message. Uh, happy birthday, Natasha. To um, I sent her a message in her birthday, and I said to her like. Um, yeah, she should do it every week. Yeah, just so everyone, just so everyone knows, I made Natasha do that. Like I gave her li- literally like <laughs> ten minutes notice. I said, "Do you want to be on the podcast tonight? Because I haven't done one, and I've got to record it now, and I've got to edit it." This was about seven o'clock in the evening, and I said, "After we have dinner, do you want to do the podcast?" Natasha can hear me now; she's upstairs. But um, and she is said she yes, or is she... <laughs> and she said is yes, she... and she helped she out, and it sounded it sounded good. It was a bit short for some reason. I I didn't keep track of the time while well, it was only 45 minutes. I, for some reason, I thought it was already an hour, but it wasn't. So it was a little bit shorter than normal, Steve. We seem to banter on a lot longer, that's for sure. But uh-huh. it was good. It was good that Tash came on anyway and just gave a, a, a woman's yeah, perspective cool. on this it's whole interesting. Porsche thing. I mean, I know you said it in the, um, in the sort of preamble and stuff like that, but just for context, Tasha is a very accomplished um, sort of in the design field. So she's got a really, really good eye, like a... A really good eye, whether it's 2D or 3D sort of things. Um, so hearing her, and then look, I know it's subjective. Everybody's kind of got their own opinions kind of thing. But um, uh, I take a lot from when I'd sort of listened to her talk about sort of things that r- relate to kind of aesthetics and um, sort of experience and stuff like that because she's quite accomplished in that sort of field. So I don't think you need to be a car enthusiast to kind of have an appreciation for like things in that regard is sort of what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, good point, good point. I like what Tasha said though about your car. No, like that's why I used it as a title because I thought it was a really cool saying. Steve's car. Remember. Steve's car. What was it? One, it was amazing, wasn't it? What I don't know, Tasha's upstairs. I don't know what, yeah. what the can't remember. And then the no lag in the back. <laughs> I just, I was just, I, I just love that saying. Steve's car's got no lag in the back. I know, like, I do remember when I took her for Which a is a great way of explaining it, by the way. It's a really good way yeah. of explaining it, isn't it? Because it doesn't. Your car does You know what I mean? Well, it's interesting that she can pick that up from the passenger seat. And, like, you know, to be honest, she's not like a mega car enthusiast sort of thing. So um, for her to kind of be able to perceive that. Um, but, and I do remember, like, she's been in my car maybe twice or three times, I think. Yeah. Maybe twice. A few times, most. yeah. 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 Um, and she's always said that she can, to me, like she can sort of see and feel the difference and stuff. Like I, I know she's sort of sharp enough to kind of um, sort of see all the differences and kind of uh, feel it. But it, from a performance perspective, the fact that she could kind of um, pick that sort of stuff up is interesting. Um, what I'm very interested would be the next time we kind of get to catch up is um, if I could take her for a sp- Ben, I'm curious as to what you both think about how loud my car is, <laughs> whether she gets in the car particularly and kind of goes, what the fuck have you done to this? Uh, like, I can't the video you showed me it sounded, it sounded loud. It sounded very loud. Are you thinking of changing yeah, it? I am. I'm pondering it because um, the drive I just did to putty with Marco, um, like admittedly, like I just sort of said, I've had very, very little sleep. So I actually woke up with a headache that day. Right. Um, and it only got worse. Really? <laughs> after, 
quite a few hours in the car. I was like, oh man, it, it is quite draining. So, you know, and then, like I said, said to you before, I kind of, we stopped and I asked Marco if I could just sort of listen to his car, like, you know, from the passenger seat. Um, and even though I thought his car was kind of fairly leery, it didn't sound nearly as loud as mine again. So I'm kind of pondering whether or not um, I shouldn't revert back to something that's a tiny bit more civilized. Right, right. But you've got a few choices there still, right? You've got a few things in your garage. <laughs> you've got a few things in your garage you can change back to, right? I do. I've got a I've got an Acro exhaust that I could stick back on. The or Acro. Have you got something I else? I could just go for a just the standard center bypass with um, the standard muffles. It's good you got choices, mate. I know. It's just <laughs> what I wish is that I, I had skills where I could just sort of swap it out myself, you know, not having to rely on somebody else to kind of do that. How many work. hours is that to do that, to switch it out? Um, two hours? Look on, yeah, when you look on YouTube clips and stuff like that, they kind of go about two hours. Waterhouse had probably spent more like three Maybe. Yeah, I would have said three hours for an exhaust, actually. Some people, well, it depends whether you're taking the side mufflers as well as the center. And um, some people choose to take the rear bumper off to kind of make it easier to access, and some people leave it on. Right. Um, Right. How is. Yeah, I. Mm. Sorry, you go. No, go. I'm just going to say, I wish I had skills. I wish I could just do it myself. So next time we'll be talking, you'll say you've changed your exhaust out. How about your um your knob, your shifter? Oh. Everyone likes to know about your shifter situation. You always seem to be changing them. Have, have, have you got the wood I one on there or you got the black polymer one on there? Poly. No, I, I, sh- I switched again. I put my um my 911 Outlaw Joel Kanesenko one on there. Oh, okay. The dark. The, oh, that one's nice. It? I like that one. I like that one, actually. That's one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, and I, I sort of said to Marco, hey, you know, check it out. I swapped it again. And he hadn't seen that one. And he said, oh, I think, I think he sort of said, yeah, that one actually looks even better. Um, yeah, that's special. That I, think, I think from an aesthetic point of view, it looks better. From a touchy-feely kind of thing, maybe it, the knob itself is um, smaller, like the ball. Okay, so um, which one feels the best, though? Is it the one from Lathworks? Is it the one from... Joel, is it the one from um, – oh, Lathworks, you've only got the two, right? You've got multiple ones from those two suppliers. I've got two Lathworks and I've got Which two... one feels the best, though, you think, feel-wise? Is it the one that's weightier? Which one? Feel-wise, the standard. Standard carbon, my original carbon <laughs> shifter. <laughs> you come back around. We do the yeah. full circle. You know what? Pure – I'm, I'm going to say – feel, is that one? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, go on. And? Uh, pure looks – well, they're very different, so that's a bit of a subjective thing. I think probably um, Joel's, like if you're going for a wooden one, Joel's one is the better kind of wooden thing. Yeah, um, I like that. The one that you one. and Marco are kind of getting, the Lathworks one for the um, copolymer, like if the black ever, thing. If it ever comes. Yeah, it's held up in um, USPS, isn't it? I don't know where it is. I haven't spoken to Yeah, Marco said to me, like he can't, he can't track it now, like it's just all over the shop, but it's being sent US Post. The thing is, you know, I'm I'm going to tag onto your obsession there and your craziness with your knobs. But yep. when I was using, yep. when I drove up the coast on Sunday, um, yep. I realized how much I like the feel of the knob that's in the car already. And you know what I yes. like? I like the aluminium feel, how you feel that really smooth aluminium. You know, you just get the touch of it. You know, it's on Where's the side. That? On the on the, yeah, on the knob. Yeah, because it's leather on, and aluminium. Sorry, isn't I'm it? trying to remember yours. Does yours have I, like? I can't explain um, what it looks at like. The front face of it, or is it on top of it? No, it's got the. I, thought, I can't even remember what's wrong with me. It's got aluminium, and when you feel it, you can feel the coldness of the aluminium on your hand, and it feels smooth. And I thought, wow, I really like the feel of this. Maybe is I don't. The top cap with the markings on it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, was thinking yeah, maybe yeah. I don't need. <laughs> maybe I don't need the Lightworks one. Um, oh, what's like, wrong with me? I know you're gonna. I know you're instantly gonna say, but you're not handy. Like. Um, it literally is like a five-minute swap. Are you sure I can do that? Because I'm really worried about changing that knob over. Seriously, I don't do want, want to do it anymore. And, do you want me to come, come and show you how to do it? Mate, it's I've still super got to, easy. Really? Okay. If you say it's easy, but then I've still got to do my number plate thing as well. That that sounds more yeah, complicated. Yeah, no, I don't do want that. to do any more handyman things. I'm going to talk about house <laughs> things. I'm going to talk about house things for a second. We bought a shower head. We're changing our – we bought like a better shower, hand shower thing. And I was right. going to do it myself. Still hasn't happened. Then, we eventually got some kind of tool yesterday, which fits, but 
I, I just, I don't know why. I just, it's not working. Scared to touch it? I don't know. The tool's kind of like already indented on the other fitting. When I tried to take it off, it didn't seem to want to budge. I don't know what's going on. I've just been going back and forwards to Bunnings trying to get a, to the hardware store here in Sydney trying to get a um trying to get the right tool to actually take it off. I know most people on when you look on YouTube they're just using a basic wrench, but for some reason I just couldn't get the right size and I just can't seem to get it off. I don't know what's wrong with me. Yeah, right. So um, that's where it's at at the moment. Yeah, shift knob and rear number plate thing. Rear number plate thing I get why you're sort of possibly kind of going, oh, that sounds a bit complicated. It's more just like putting drilling holes in the right spot but i made you a template for that so it's all cool um, but i'm not drilling my car though right i'm just drilling the number no, you're plate. drilling you're drilling the number plate bracket the one that's been made no i think it might be the the one that's holding your plate oh really mm, okay yep better buy a drill then no i, I told you like either <laughs> you can borrow mine or if you trust me because inevitably <laughs> I could fuck it up and you could wind up with Swiss cheese. Um, <laughs> like when you hang um, a painting on the wall. I don't mind doing it for you. <laughs> like when you hang a painting on the wall. Yeah, exactly. Hey, um, anything else? We should go. We're at an hour and a half. I, where time's got away from us. Hey, I think, um, and I know everyone's going, mm. no, no, don't do it. But I think, Steve, we're going to say farewell. We're going to say farewell to the listeners. We're going to say farewell to the new year. This is going to be the last episode of Friday's episode until the new year. Um, I think it's just going to be a little bit crazy. Um, I'm a bit all over the place because I've just got back to Sydney and I know Steve's got a lot going on at Christmas with family and, and catching up and stuff, Steve. So I, I know I just kind of dropped it on you before we started recording, but no, you cool with that? Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Don't yeah. sound too upset. Everyone's going to go, what's I'm wrong? Not. Well, you want me to pretend? Oh, please don't. All right. So <laughs> No. So that's that's where we're going to stand. So uh, so going forward, uh, going forward over the next few weeks, um, there will be owner stories. I'm recording owner stories now. I'm, I'm I've, I've kind of been working overtime doing that. There'll be owner stories going in for uh, all over Christmas. So there'll be the Tuesday's episode, uh, the Friday episode with me and Steve will stop uh, until the new year. We'll come back in the new year. I'll let you guys know the date when uh, we've, when Steve and I've worked it out. But it'll be in January. Uh, in the meantime, if there, in the meantime though, Steve, I know that I had. Um, mm. I've had, uh, I'm not going to say what, but I've had a couple of people approach me to do an episode about something different. Mm -hmm. If I have time, maybe we can slip, or maybe I'll slip that in there um, during the period. Hey. Um, it's yeah, just cool. about, it's a values one, and I know you don't want to be involved in talking about values. So um, mm -hmm. it's about values in Australia and stuff. So I'm not going to say who that's with, but it's with two people who have been on owner stories before. I just want to keep it a bit of a secret. So that, that, that will be an episode that I will try to record. I'm not sure when. Yep. So we, I might slip yep. that in there. So there's some other, another episode there for the guys over the break, but otherwise it's just Tuesday's episode, owner stories episode going forward. Steve and I'll be back in the new year. Um, and on saying that we've gone well over time today, it's an hour and 33, hour and 35 minutes. I know you guys like to do it on your walk and walks are not an hour and 30 minutes usually or runs. Um, but I just want to say, Steve, and I know you want to, you will, um, join me with this, that I just want to say thank you to everyone, um, over the past 12 months. It's been pretty crazy, pretty crazy how much the podcast has grown. So I really, really appreciate it. And I know Steve does as well. <laughs> Even though I don't say it. <laughs> All right, um, that's about it, everyone. Uh, everyone, I hope everyone has a great Christmas, a great New Year, and we will catch Merry you. Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, and we will Happy oh. Christmas um, oh. to the people that celebrate, and we will uh, catch oh. you in twenty twenty two, which will be year three of the podcast. It started in twenty nineteen. Is it? Yep. Wow. Seriously, twenty nineteen. Yes. So twenty twenty two. It's a long time, Steve. 160, oh, yeah. I don't even know, you know what episode we're up to now. What are we up to? We, we're rambling. This is 158. This is episode 158 for those that want to know. All right. Thanks, everyone. Steve, anything else before we go? No. Nope. Uh, watch the Michael Fassbender thing. It finished and it's really good. That's okay. my tip. I haven't watched it. Is there two more episodes left? Mm, I don't know. It's finished. The season's over and it's <laughs> you really noticed, good. Okay. Speaking about motorsport, you notice how I haven't mentioned Formula One? And I'm not going to. Yeah, I don't know how to feel I just, about that. I just... I just, you know, I, I don't even know if I'm going to watch it anymore. 
I don't know if I'm going to watch it anymore. I, I'm just surely, surely, that, surely. I know he's an Aussie, but surely Michael Massey's going to get the axe. I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I know there's a lot of Verstappen fans out there, but Michael Massey's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot. I'm sorry. He's going to get the axe, isn't he? He has to be the fall guy. Someone has to, someone has to pay for it. It's wrong. I'm sorry. It's wrong. It's yeah. not. It doesn't matter what side you're on. That's not. That's not sport. That's ratings. Um, so that's how it works. All right, Steve. Thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> Cool. We'll, um, we'll, we'll chat very, very soon. Thanks, mate. See you, mate. All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening to the Portugal podcast. Like I said, this is the last episode for Friday for 2021. We'll see you in 2022 or we'll talk to you in 2022. And that's about it. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. <laughs>